Welcome to the Enneagram 2.0 podcast. I'm Beatrice Chestnut. And I'm Uranio Pais. And today we are talking about shadows again. It, yes, it's the sequence, it's the second episode of four in which we are talking about everything shadows. And today we're going to talk about heart types and head types. If you haven't yet listened to the first episode on this, which is our last episode on Enneagram 2.0, that was about the three instincts and the body types. And no. I think we define shadows a bit too. Exactly. Which yes. is basically, you know, all that tends to remain unconscious right. for a person um, that they don't see and they don't see that they don't see. Right. Um, and of course, one of the things that's really good about the Enneagram as a growth tool is it shows you some of your conscious tendencies and patterns that tend to be more available to your awareness, uh -huh. but it also points out uh, blind spots and shadows and, and, and aspects of you that you don't see, that you tend to not want to see, that your ego pushes away from your awareness, um, but that drives you anyway you know we we tend to act from shadows which is what makes them particularly um, challenging um, when we don't see them so of course a big part of inner growth um, is seeing and integrating owning your shadow to become more whole to become you know to get to a place where you're more in self-acceptance not only of some things that maybe you've gotten used to about yourself but the You've accepted the deeper, darker parts of yourself that you may, on some level, believe are completely unacceptable. Yeah, so. the Enneagram is not a system meant to, to just point out to good things about type. Right, yeah. right. And as we did uh, before we started body types, let's talk first about shadows for the triad, for hard types in general. Good idea. Say a few things before we get to type two. Right. So hard types, in my view, be and you are a hard type, so um, I'm interested in seeing your takes on this. Uh, hard types in general, they have uh, a little bit more than other types, in my view, the shadow of manipulation of how other people see, uh, you know, how they want to be seen, and then manipulation in terms of shape-shifting. I know that fours is, are also a little bit less than twos and threes, but I also think that they, they do some of that. I think there are some emotional games that get played and that are uh, shadows, uh, sometimes blind spots, sometimes even deeper shadows. I think that things like talking behind the back of people um, and, you know, playing political games. I think that in organizations, they do more of that than other types, although that is more about, you know, people who live in particular organizational uh, environments uh, that regardless of type are places that um, allow for that more than others. Um, anyway, I think also that another shadow for hard types is how much they, you know, because they, uh, they depend on other people's approvals, how much they adapt. I think that sometimes that's not conscious <clears throat> and it goes to points that might really not be very nice. Um, in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I can say more. I want to hear from you first. Um, I guess I would say I, the way I see it is maybe the heart types shadow being a little bit more about the impact of their emotions on others, mm. whether they're more conscious of their emotions and expressing them or less conscious, but acting them out. You know, mm -hmm. when we're not conscious of our emotions, sometimes we act them out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I see fours as being less shape-shifting, like not very much, um, ex with the exception maybe of self-preservation fours. And I think also when self-preservation fours shape-shift, it tends to be more conscious. Um, they may not feel comfortable doing it, but they're more tuned into other people's approval than I think the other two fours and the social fours and sexual fours, I sort of think can sometimes almost be a little bit um, like, you know what, I'm not 
going to shape shift. I'm going to be who I am, mm -hmm. which is partly why they sometimes have this sense of uh, not being good enough or other yeah. people judging them. While I agree with that, I also think that they are not like a five like me. You know, they, if they meet someone new, if they are in a party, it's more like they need to convey a certain <clears throat> impression at first, just as an example. Yeah, and, and I guess I wouldn't call that shape-shifting because sometimes I think the impression that fours want to create is one of authenticity or originality or individual, um, an individual aspect of who they are that's very real. That's not very much based on shape-shifting. But I get what your, your point is. It's like that there's a, there's a, a consciousness of creating an impression and how other people are viewing you. Um, and I think that tends to be quite conscious, um, maybe a little bit less conscious in threes. Um, but I do think there is a, a sense of um, orienting to others, part of which is conscious, but other, other aspects of which may be less conscious, like, um, you know, the downsides of shape-shifting or adapting too much or trying to get other people's approval, what happens when you don't get it, um, those kinds of things. Yeah, another thing is that um, we always see, you know, we hear lots of stories from our students in our retreats. And there is a clear pattern that when someone had a hard type parent, that chances are that that parent made too many things about themselves. And that is a shadow for me for hard types, mm -hmm. including choose. Uh, we hear that a lot also from twos, although it's more for fours, a little less for threes, I think, but still. And uh, and also another shadow is the impact that they create with their emotionality on other people that can feel for other people a little bit like emotional abuse. And that's very hard for hard types to take in because you know, they, they first of all, they feel hurt more easily and it's very hard to, sh to see shadows. And how can I, uh, being this more sensitive and empathetic person, and by the way, I think that hard types tend to have more easily empathy. Um, uh, how can I become more emotionally abusive? It's because like to me, innate, runs the risk of being more morally abusive or psychologically abusive but <clears throat> but i think that at times or behaviorally behaviorally abusive but hard types hard, hard types sometimes use their emotions to uh, to produce certain uh, emotional states on other people and uh, when people are not emotional it may be perceived as extremely hard. And there might be a shadow behind there that is worth investigating. Yeah, emotional manipulation. And I yeah. think, again, the less conscious that is, the, the worse it is yeah. <laughs> in all yeah. hard types. Yeah. So let's go to each type in the triad, starting with choose because of our normal sequence. So do you want to start or should I start? I think that on the last episode I started mostly and then you added, but uh, we can do it differently if you want. How do you want to do it? Um, well, I can start just because it's two. Okay, um, yes, and good idea. Although you may point out things that I don't see because it's my shadow. Mm -hmm. um, I can start with some things that I think tend to be shadows for twos. Um, and I think it's really important because a lot of people, I think, don't always understand the dark side of twos. I remember one time I was doing a panel with twos and it took a while. Uh, we were deep into the panel where someone in the audience raised their hand and said, what's the dark side, right? And I think a lot of times twos get um, portrayed in terms of their more conscious elements of focusing on other people, you know, being helpful, being supportive in order to be supported themselves. But Again, that's already a part of their shadow is the giving to get piece. Um, many twos can believe I'm just being altruistic. I'm just really wanting to be generous and not see that they give to others to get something back. And sometimes it's just approval or um, affection or something like that. But the giving to get is very important. Um, and I think when you said that 
that her types can focus more on themselves. I think with twos, they don't focus on themselves, but there's a shadow part that they're, they become more selfish, uh, but they don't see it. And of course it's bad. Twos often react very negatively to the idea of being selfish, right? And that I think is a, a, even a big clue of what's in the shadow, which is selfishness, mm -hmm. which is I'm really doing it for myself. Even at the moment, I, everything in me is telling myself and you that I'm doing this for you, you know, so doing something for you when I'm really doing it, something I'm doing it for myself at the bottom. So that's one thing. And of course, connected to that is the fact that two's needs tend to be in their shadow. Often, if you ask a two, what do you need? They don't know. Right. And often early in childhood, two's needs didn't get met by their caretakers early on. And so what happens is the two kind of learns like I get rejected when I'm needy, so I won't have needs. And so needs get relegated to the shadow. And the last thing a two wants to to be seen as and I can testify to this is needy. Um, we really don't want, especially people who are important to us, we want to like us and meet our needs. We really don't want them to see us as needy because we believe about ourselves that that means we will get rejected. Um, and so I think we also have in our shadow a contempt for people who are needy, even while we may meet those needs or we may, you know, I don't agree with a lot of people who say that twos like to meet other people's needs or looking for people, you know, um, that are needy to have a purpose. Now, again, I think sometimes that's true, but I, I think it's part of this whole system, which is very shadowy, right? I think that deep down people don't like needy people, but meeting others' needs gives them a, a sense of power and control. So another big um, shadow, I think, is the need for control. I think that twos often feel like, oh, I'm just doing what makes you happy. I'm flexible. I'm adaptable. And I've had the conscious thought about myself so often that I'm easygoing, that I'm adaptable, that, oh, it's all okay with me. But underneath, um, it's really, there is really a sense of wanting to control through being helpful. Um, and Anne Lamott, an author I like, once said in an interview, help is the sunny side of control. Right. So the, 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 side, the side we focus on is helping. The side we don't focus on is how that gives us a role that gives us power. If, we, if you can't get along without me, that gives me control in the situation because you can't do it without me. Right. So deep down, there's a bigger need for control. Also, of course, manipulation is a big part of the two shadow. Um, the sense of I'm I'm helping you to manipulate you into doing something for me or I'm expressing my feelings, maybe it's flattery, maybe it's positive feelings. I'm expressing a lot of positivity so that you like me or so that you do something for me or so that I get something from you that I want without having to ask directly. Again, because twos avoid rejection at all costs, that's usually pretty conscious, but, um, but that tendency to be manipulative, that tendency to want to pull the strings behind the scenes um, I think tends to be a, a big shadow. Okay, so these were very important points. I'll add a few, I'll try to add a few. Um, so sometimes the trying to be extremely special is shadowy because uh, sometimes choose acknowledge more easily that they need to be important, but not that they want to be special. And there is a shadow of, I want to be above everything else in your life. And yeah. uh, so that's one thing to be really essential also in terms of you will depend on me. Mm -hmm. That's shadowy and it does happen. And it's not easy for most Jews to acknowledge that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So there is a superiority complex here uh, of, uh, I am above you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the at least my other rivals. And that's part of attention. the pride, which, of course, is a big yeah. part of what's uh, unconscious. Yeah. And then uh, I I can make everybody like me. The, that uh, belief has manipulation underneath. Right. Because I will do things, including change myself, so that you like me. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'll make you believe 
that I have some preferences, some tastes like yours in a way that you will like me. But am I really being true in here? Um, and then you will help me without asking, without me needing to ask you. So a very <coughs> shadowy side of creating a lot of expectations. And I would say that sometimes the mindset of reciprocity, it's such a given that it might become shadowy for, uh, for choose. Uh, and then there is that thing of, I can manage you, mm -hmm. you, you know, so control, as you said, mm -hmm. being big. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to say a few other things. That and I, and I would say connected to that, mm -hmm. just to, is a, a, there's often a, a really strong belief of, I know what's best for other mm -hmm. people. Yeah. You know, kind of an assumption that um, my view of what's right is the right view. Um, and I know better, you know, what you need than you need, you know, yourself. Yes. So it's yes. a little bit of like an invasiveness or a violation of people's boundaries yeah. to kind of think I know what you should do even more than you do. Or I yeah. know how you feel or what's best or what you need even more than you do. And and I think sometimes twos don't see that as kind of a violation of other people's space. Yeah. And then um, I think that one of the ways that shadows operate in general is that when we criticize something in on other people is because we are like that and we don't see it. Yes. Projection. Right? Projection and the mirror effect is, is important. Uh, and we need to mirror ourselves on others and ask mm -hmm. ourselves. So maybe I am like that. So one of the things that I notice sometimes at cho in choose is that while they don't acknowledge their own needs, the main ones, uh, and they don't like needy people, they might be very needy. Sometimes that's a shadow. And also uh, uh, one last thing I want to say is that many choose, um, not even understand <clears throat> what I mean when I tell this to them, when I say that they are being very personal. It's like, well, uh, everything's personal. And when they are only personal, the shadow might be that I distort what is being said, what I say. I'm Do you not mean taking things too personally. No, and I mean more than that. I'm, I'm saying that all content that is discussed mm -hmm. necessarily has a very important personal aspect mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. So everything comes down to relationship, to how I'm feeling and in relation to you mm -hmm. and so forth. So it's like, it's hard for choose to understand that that doesn't need to be a main factor. Yeah, I can't understand it right now, as you're saying. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah, because some, some uh, things... In fact, uh, yeah. Some things can be Are just you sure you're uh, not rational. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I've explained a lot and you helped me right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that head types will understand me. Okay. Least. Yes. Yeah. So let's move on to threes. Okay. So type threes. Um, should I start yes, or do you yes, want to start? Good idea. Okay. So I think um, some of the blind spots for threes include um, their own emotions and the value of their own emotions. So even though we often say, and it's really true, that threes are emotional, they're the core of the heart center, the heart triad. Um, they, when they, in everyday life, when they're focusing on tasks and goals and getting things done, um, they often are not very conscious of how they're feeling in the moment. Um, and unconsciously they avoid being conscious of how they're feeling in the moment because there tends to be a more conscious belief that feelings are not productive, that emotions will sh slow them down, that there's no real purpose for their emotions. Um, and so they tend to either sort of push them away from their consciousness or put them on the back burner. Um, and so I think that the value of, in, of, of emotions in, in helping the three understand what's important to them and who they are 
and what's going on with them in the moment is really not very conscious. And I think that's a blind spot. And of course, related to that is kind of their true self is in the shadow. Um, the threes are the prototype for all nine types of identifying with a persona or a personality or a mask or an image and then believing that's who you are. Right. So believing I am what I do. A lot of threes actually believe that. And if they're very successful, even worse. Right. My identity is completely tied up in, with what I do every day and my image and my work position or title. Um, and so there's a real blind spot around maybe if they don't like doing what they're doing or they are feeling sad or, you know, all the emotions that go on underneath that really are indicative of their real self apart from or as distinct from their persona or their mm -hmm. image. And I think until threes do inner work, often that stays in the, in the shadow. And there's even a sense of if I'm in touch with that, that won't be good. Um, I'll be uncomfortable or it will throw me off my game or it will undermine my success or my ability to reach my goals. And so it can tend to um, stay uh, in the shadow. Now, I think another thing is the downside of working hard and being successful, right? I think for many threes, it's like, how could, you know, how could there be any downside to being successful or to working really hard to reach goals and get things done? Um, especially in a culture like like mine in the U.S., where that kind you know being successful, making money, getting things done, being productive, reaching goals like some people don't question that at all that there could be any problem with that. But of course, threes go overboard and they become workaholics and they don't see um, the what happens to them until there's a breakdown. Right. They don't almost see their human needs for slowing down or for rest or for um, uh, giving themselves time to just not be in work mode and all the things that they miss out in life when they work too hard, I think, often can be in the shadow. And it, it, it can take a long time for uh, a three to to for it to dawn on them that, wow, I'm missing my kid's life or I'm, I'm missing out on important experiences with um, the people I love when I focus so much on work. Um, so also the value of failure and the value of slowing down and not doing anything. I think those can also be blind spots for, for, for threes. And I use blind spots a little bit synonymously with shadow, although I think the shadow is deeper and more, uh, of a complex, it, it's it goes beyond mere blind spots to uh, sort of psychological uh, aspects of ourselves that remain unconscious. So, but I, I'm using those a little bit um, synonymously. But I think the shadow is sort of bigger uh, than just a mere blind spot. Good one. So, what I'll add, um, I think that threes have a, <clears throat> a, a shadow of using people. Mm. of being making relationships something like utilitarian mm -hmm. um, and you know putting people having people as means to um, uh, other objectives mm -hmm. uh, like uh, people as resources mm. right and <clears throat> um, so other another thing that is a little bit connected to that is uh, my goals are the ones that matter. Mm -hmm. And that has to do both with excessive individualism mm -hmm. and some opportunism. And opportunism. Opportunism. And uh, perhaps um, a, a, an excessively high ambition. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I think there is also a, a belief that is a big shadow of omnipotence Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the sense that I can make things happen, but also I am the one, only one mm -hmm. that can do that. Um, it, it's a lot <clears throat> about uh, if I'm not there, you, you, you all are not competent enough to mm -hmm. make this happen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm completely indispensable. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so I think these are a few other. Uh, oh, there is another one that I want to say. I think there is a very shadowy part of threes when things are starting to fail 
they start looking to people they're going to blame <laughs> Interesting. about that. Interesting. Like people, including people on the team. Yeah, it's almost like they start seeing about how they can distance themselves from the yeah. failure. And yeah. that can be one I see, one way. for instance, leaders in companies that uh, start saying how that employee, that other one are to be blamed mm -hmm. when something went wrong. Right. Or uh, like uh, coaches, managers, and sports teams, mm -hmm. they they talk very bluntly about something that some players did, mm -hmm. and that's very shadowy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And of course, for all nine types, the passion is uh, part of the shadow. And for threes, that self deceit, that um, I am who I need to be in the eyes of others, um, and so related to not knowing who they really are. There can even be a sense of not knowing that they don't know who they really they are. are. Like yeah. it's almost like the sense of I can be whoever I need to be, and that other me doesn't exist. Right? Mm -hmm. There is no other real self um, because I need to be able to control who I am in order to be successful or to be seen in a certain positive way. So let's move on to fours. I'm glad you already talked a bit about some subtype things in the beginning but um for force mm. but what what do you would you start saying about type four shadows i think what i would say about type four shadow is because type four tends to be the one type that is sort of prototypically more in touch with the shadow <laughs> their shadow tends to be more positive shadow mm. right so because they tend to focus on what's missing or what people aren't looking at or what is shadowy in themselves and others um, in terms of what we typically mean by shadow in terms of parts of ourselves that are unacceptable or people won't like or things like that because they tend to identify more with those kinds of things like their own deficiency or inadequacy or ways that they don't measure up or ways that people will see them in, in ways they don't like. Um, what's positive it tends to be more in the shadow, um, what they're good at, um, how they are special by just being who they are instead of striving to be extraordinary or expressing something big and artistic in order to be uh, valuable. So it's like, what's positive? In their, strength, their real strengths, um, that can be uh, in the shadow. Also, always seeing what's positive in the here and now situation or in other people. Sometimes they can focus on other people's flaws or what's not happening in the situation instead of what's happening that's going really well. Um, also, I think how they over-identify with emotions. So a little bit like, uh, I feel, therefore I am. Um, and not seeing emotions in their proper perspective of, uh, you know, it's that, it's that old thing of, uh, don't identify with the clouds, identify with the sky. It's like fours think of, uh, they identify with the emotions, just like identifying with the clouds that come through instead of that the larger self that has emotions that come and go. Uh, but it's as if I, you know, I am my feelings and, and my feelings um, need to be validated. And also there's something wrong with me for being so emotional at the same time. Um, it's kind of a little bit both of that. And then it, the last thing I would say is because of the comparing mind, because fours are always comparing and either I'm better than you or less than you, um, equality, you know, a kind of sense that in a basic way, we're all equally valuable. Um, sometimes that is in the shadow. They, they, they think that there's an inherent, um, superiority or inferiority in every situation and every relationship uh, and so the sense that we're all we all have inherent worth uh, in a certain basic way by just being who we are and just being human you know we all have faults we all have um, capacities and uh, some people aren't worse than others in some ways and I think there's a way that fours really believe in this idea that they're somehow worse or better, as right. the case may be. Okay, I'll add a few things. I'm afraid that I'll, I'll, I'll go deeper than you went in terms of hard things for force to, to hear right now. Okay. Um, and it's never better or worse. It's something that is just different. 
time yeah. from time. And, and this might be a moment to say that if you're listening to this and you have the thought, oh, that they're naming a really bad thing for this type. And the thing they named for the other type wasn't as bad. Um, from, from my point of view, I think I can say from our point of view, all these shadows are equally bad. <laughs> they're ego. They're, you know, they're parts of ourselves that we just don't want to see. And they're all bad, but none are worse than others. I think inherently that's just the nature of shadow is that it's bad that we're not seeing what we're not seeing, but it doesn't mean, I think, depending on level of awareness and history and, um, and an individual person where they are on their path, the less conscious, the worse, but it's not like one type is worse than another, but go ahead. Yeah, I think. Uh, it's important to understand that the passions, all passions, um, bring um, bad content with mm-hmm. them, mm-hmm. like uh, some part of the badness in us. And mm-hmm. all of us have goodness and badness. Mm-hmm. And the way that operates in envy, the passion for type four, is that they not not only would like to have what, what others have, but they they unconsciously want that other person not to have that anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I want the other to lose mm-hmm. what they have. Mm-hmm. And also a shadow of, I sort of want the other person to suffer. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's only sexual force in the shadowy part. I mm-hmm. think it's any form. Yeah. Um, so I want to take away from you something. When mm-hmm. I I have that um, desire I, I for the steal same, steal it from you and take it for myself. When yeah, I end stealing it. really, uh, yeah. and stealing even energy or something like that. Um, so, uh, in in some worst cases, it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. That might even bring a little bit of the vampire shadow. Mm-hmm. Uh, although it's not only for fours, mm-hmm. like twos, we didn't mention that for That's twos. Right. Yeah, sometimes. the vampiric quality. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and also uh, not being aware of the other mm. is a shadow. Mm. Like I live inside myself so much right. and I'm so self-referencing yeah. that I really don't see you. Yeah. Right. It's all about me. Yeah. And, and then there is another shadow that... Um, if, if there is nothing that's making me suffer, I'll easily create something in my head mm-hmm. or remember something or idealize something. And then the more shadowy part of that, because that's more the mindset mm-hmm. or the fixation. But the more shadowy part is that they project that as someone else's fault mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, many times. It's the other person who's missing something mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. in that, right? So also another shadow thing, uh, like positive, it, I, I actually don't want to have a happy life, mm, right? Mm-hmm. So the, uh, it, right. it's a shadow sometimes of not owning how dark I can be. Right, right. It's like a, a kind of attachment to disappointment and dissatisfaction mm. and a resistance to being happy, to feeling joy, um, almost as if there's something wrong with that or it's going to be inauthentic or something like that. Should we move on to head types? Sure. And start with the triad. Yes, please. So all head types have what is sometimes a shadow of intolerance of uncertainty. Mm. And and that's really big. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I, I structure my life so that I'm not caught by surprises and uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a lot of control behind Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. a lot of control Mm -hmm. for all three types Mm -hmm. in the triad fives sixes and sevens Uh, it might be a little trickier to see that on sevens but there is a lot of control you know Mm -hmm. the options i'm opening it's more like i am opening them Mm -hmm. not as much the ones that you have opened although Mm -hmm. i might use some of yours but it's always my choice in the end and I need... and so how is the control different in head types? Can you make that in terms of that a shadowy I think need I, for control? Yeah, and, and yeah, because control is a shadow in all three triads and we in talked about ways, it. Yes. But the, the way that control operates for head types, mm-hmm. in my view, is that they are not willing to follow what life brings 
and what other people bring to them. They're, they tend to be more bossy in terms of having their agendas uh, managed by them. Okay. Um, but another shadow for head types is being cold cold with other people, not really feeling much. Mm. And I don't think it's just for some some of the mm. types there mm -hmm. or some subtypes. Like, as I said, choose might be only personal in their lives. Mm -hmm. I think that head types in general can be very impersonal mm. and only mm -hmm. impersonal mm -hmm. and not really. So I'll say something hard here mm. for head types to own, mm -hmm. but not caring not caring mm -hmm. uh, and I mean not with things and and things in general but mm -hmm. more not not caring as much with other people for other people mm -hmm. and then something about a shadow of not having as much accountability Mm -hmm. like uh, if i am more in the planning thing mm -hmm. if i'm more overseeing things and thinking of st strategy uh i'm not really committing to being the one who goes mm -hmm. there and does and i'm not you know uh, you know putting my my name or my reputation or my or all of my energy mm -hmm. in what's happening Mm -hmm. I think that happens with all three uh, types mm -hmm. in the triad. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always because sometimes they can be moved by responsibility also, mm -hmm. but, uh, and it's not being unprofessional. It's not mm -hmm. that, um, but it's, it's like uh, not sometimes not doing as much as other people. Mm -hmm. And there are exceptions here, like social sixes, mm -hmm. but um but then the other the other thing is, uh, while I, I'm not doing as much or committing or being as accountable, I I make myself a little bit more um, superior than you, mm -hmm. a shadow of arrogance mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I am. Um, I feel that I'm above all of those mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that are more basic operational. It, but I think that's more of a collective shadow of society that has, for so many centuries, put, you know, mind and rationality above other things. Mm -hmm. That comes from that more mm -hmm. collective uh, mm -hmm. thing. Um, yeah, and a shadow of inferiority as a consequence. Like, mm -hmm. I'm less capable, I, mm -hmm. I feel less mm -hmm. in the inside. Because there is no such a thing like a superiority complex without inferiority complex mm -hmm. underneath. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Should we talk about fives? Yeah, I just say mm -hmm. sort of yeah. kind of building on what you said, but restating slightly what you've already said. So this isn't radically different. But I think there can be a shadow of devaluing emotions. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the intellect is omnipotent it's better being rational is better always than being irrational and i think that i think a lot of people even heart types i hear heart saying heart type saying well i'm being irrational emotions by definition are not rational it's a different thing but it's not worse right it's it's almost like if you can be in tune with your thoughts and your emotions then you're tuning into yourself in stereo these are two channels uh, but I think sometimes head types, and I think the rest of the world, because we go along with head types with this, see what's intellectual and rational as superior, kind of like what you said. And there's an arrogance about that. Um, and so that's all I would say is there's a... I, I'd add uh, <clears throat> one more. Um, there is something about head types of acting like poor me. Hmm. A poor me thing. Mm. Uh, which is behind the self-deprecating -depre quality uh, uh -huh. uh, that you see more easily in five sixes mainly, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. a little bit on sevens mm -hmm. when they say, oh, no, that, that's, you know, just help me out here. Right. You know, it's like uh, maybe, maybe a shadow of feeling a bit more childish. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Maybe. Um, 
And that a last thing I would say is, like we talked about with the heart types having a shadow of emotional ma manipulation, I think head types have the sh ha head types have the shadow of intellectual manipulation. Yes. So it's yeah. like if I can make a good argument, then you have to believe me, you know, or my the way I see this intellectually trumps any way that you might feel about it, or any any other you know sort of way that you might. Um, want to do things it's like i can talk you into it sometimes i think we see it with sevens more through intellectual charm oh. with sixes it can be more like good reasons for you to see it the way i see it or see the problem the way i'm defining it um and maybe some similarity with with yeah. five and sometimes terms of logic control what you talked about in terms of control yes and sometimes logic is not as impartial as you we would like yes. it's like using logic for my to to justify my own thoughts exactly exactly i'm making this sound as if it's the lot the most logical thing possible when it's just my logic that i'm wanting to see as superior because it's so logical hmm. do you want to start with uh, shadows for fire why so? don't you start okay so I think that it's it might be even bigger the thing about being cold mm. for fives yeah. uh, and a, a lack of generosity mm -hmm. that can be very shadowy mm -hmm. uh, like a gap of time at the very least mm -hmm. in standing up to go towards you to to mm. really be there for you mm -hmm. it, it, it's a lack of generosity and not only <clears throat> a hard time getting into action mm -hmm. it's not only that mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i also think that for fives there is um a very shadowy thing about saving energy mm -hmm. uh, for me but mostly for you mm -hmm. you know it's like uh, no i'm not available and uh i won't make myself available and a, a shadow of independence mm. for me and for you and self-sufficiency mm -hmm. uh, being not only something that need that should be praised in society mm -hmm. because sometimes we praise those things as if they were mm -hmm. uh, good mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I believe that um, it's not only that it's not mm -hmm. only good mm -hmm. there is a shadow of um, you know again not being personal but also not caring much mm -hmm. and not creating bonds connections mm -hmm. um, and not living in, in this necessary codependency mm -hmm. in society mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now i think there is another very particular shadow for fives and that is they think that they are more mature than mm. they are mm. and they <clears throat> and other people tell them that they are more mature mm. like mm. forever like uh, even before i was a teenager but mainly mm -hmm. when i was a teenager mm -hmm. i would have several friends coming to me and saying oh you're very mature mm -hmm. and i would believe that and i would feel the same the other mm -hmm. day i was doing a sort of a typing interview and the mm -hmm. five person told me yeah, my problem is that I'm very mature in my relationships. I'm always more mature of people and that other person is not as mature. Right. And in that case, I wonder if not being emotional mm. in the five mind gets late, that gets defined as being more mature. Exactly. When maybe but, it's just the, 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 you know, the blind spot or the shadow of not seeing emotions as valuable mm. and being in touch with emotions gets sort of reframed as something that's positive and, and makes the person more superior. Yeah, and I think it's not only that. It's also because of a lot of self-control. Mm -hmm. and, and maturity is not that. Mm -hmm. It's not self-control. Mm -hmm. Mature, True maturity is... Uh, you know, one who has gone through everything in life mm -hmm. and develops experience. Right. And then Including I'm, emotions. Yeah. But not only emotions. Right, of course. Uh, it's, uh, what I'm saying is that it's worse than that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and another shadow of thinking that we are wise uh, while wisdom depends on experience mm -hmm. and, um, and being knowledgeable as being something 
superior as if I'm wise. Mm -hmm. And um, and also a lot of um, um, do what I say, but don't do what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't need to walk the talk mm -hmm. at times. Mm -hmm. exists for fives. Mm -hmm. But what would you say? Um, I would say a little bit like what we're talking about already, intellectualizing and the way it's a defense mechanism. The way seeing things more through their intellectual lens or only through um, mental activity, rationality is somehow the main thing and uh, a better thing, you know, like a little bit like what we were talking about with head types in terms of the intellect being superior to uh, emotions. Um, I would also say um, the impact on, on others, on relationships of not communicating very much. Um, and I think sometimes what fives don't realize is when you don't say what you're thinking, when you don't come forward with sharing what's going on inside you, which fives often just habitually don't, people project onto you what they think is going on with you. And I think sometimes fives object to that as if like, how dare you assume you know what I'm thinking when it's like, well, you didn't tell me what I you were thinking. And when there is silence or, um, or nothing <laughs> is coming forward, people will project what they think is going on with you. And so I think fives can help not, you know, help themselves not be projected onto not people not interpreting what's happening with them incorrectly by being more open. But again, there's this sort of sense of being open is not necessarily a good thing. So I'm not seeing the downsides of that. Yeah, but I want to say regarding that, that communication itself is a shadow. Yeah. Because fives don't know many times mm -hmm. that they under communicate. <clears throat> right. And uh, there is something even crazier, which is I don't remember mm -hmm. if I said that or not, or if I just thought of mm. that. Or even if I, if I thought of you, but I can't remember if I talked with you. <laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, but carry yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would also say um, the value of emotions and relational nourishment, which is connected to another big shadow, which is abundance. Mm -hmm. um, the way that the, all the positives you get from allowing yourself to be more open with others, more known, um, risking sort of losing energy by engaging more emotionally at a deeper level and make, you know, opening up more to others and how that can not be something that drains you, but be something that nourishes you and brings more abundance into your life. It's that, you know, the, it's the idea that the focus on scarcity reinforces scarcity, you know, it, it, nine's belief that they only have a certain amount of energy or that they'll lose energy if they have certain interactions leads to more and more scarcity. And so there's almost like an inability to conceive of the abundance uh, that they have access to because of the mindset of um, that focuses a lot on um, having scarce resources and needing to manage those resources with so much control. Should we move on to sixes? Sure. Do you want to start? Um, no, you can start. Okay, so sixes have a shadow of pessimism and of, of almost wishing that the worst happens. Mm. I think that sixes are pessimistic. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we say, well, they see themselves as realistic and they are contrarians more than pessimistic. But I do see sixes taking a lot, a lot of pleasure when something bad that they have been saying mm -hmm. that could happen happens and mm -hmm. nobody else had listened to them yes <laughs> it's almost like a pleasure some of the relief that they mm -hmm. feel when when the the you know the the, the what they thought was a risk happens mm -hmm. the relief that they feel is almost like that pleasure mm -hmm. you know that the worst is happen, mm -hmm. happening and they can be also very dark very mm -hmm. negative mm -hmm. uh, but then a, even bigger shadow of not 
owning responsibility for my own life. Mm -hmm. The thing about authority mm -hmm. and being reluctant to be the authority is total uh, lack of um, intention mm -hmm. to be the authority. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I won't show up for life. Mm -hmm. I won't be the one. Mm -hmm. I refuse to take the lead, not mm -hmm. because I'm humble, Mm. Not because I am someone who doesn't want to be above others. Mm -hmm. It's like pure cowardice. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to, to be the one doing the hard thing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's shadow. Mm -hmm. And I won't accomplish my mission sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, I won't do that because mm -hmm. that, that's, that's um, a position that I might be attacked. And mm -hmm. it's, it's fearful. Mm -hmm. uh, and and then procrastination at times mm -hmm. is a shadow because they mm -hmm. they they reframe that mm -hmm. as being just caution and being something mm -hmm. that then because I take care of all the aspects I have more mm -hmm. quality later on. Mm -hmm. That might be true in practice, mm -hmm. but what is behind that? What is mm -hmm. underneath that as a motivation? Yeah, right. So doubt and procrastination have a darker side mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Now, also sixes have this uh, tendency of making less of others who don't think of everything that, um, that they should. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I know you don't. A little bit similar to fives, but in other contexts. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also in a way, um, because they 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 feel like I need to protect the others in my life, mm -hmm. family, friends, and I need to take care of them, and I feel guilty if I don't. Mm -hmm. You are really um, making less of other people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're patronizing yeah. other people, right? And you're not allowing them to choose at times, mm -hmm. you know, the course of their own lives. Right, right. Uh, as so if there's, there's only control. one way to make someone safe, you know, and yeah. that's your way as a six. And control also yeah. behind all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what would you add? Um, I think there's a lot having to do just with fear that's in the shadow for sixes. And of course, um, when we talk about sixes, it's hard to not talk about the three subtypes because they do this in such different ways. And so I think they end up having different shadows even within type six. So I, I won't be able to help talking a little bit more about subtypes with sixes because they're just, they can be very opposite. Um, but for all sixes, usually when sixes first learn the Enneagram, what they often say, and this can be any subtype is, um, I, I wasn't, I completely wasn't aware that fear was kind of at the core of what drives me. Um, I called it preparation or being a good problem solver or being perfectionistic um, when really it was fear at a deeper level. So I th think sometimes fear and the way it gets experienced is in the shadow for many sixes. And part of the work of the type six and, and their growth path is making that more conscious and making more conscious choices about how you um how you act when you're feeling fearful, you know, as we say, the definition of courage is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. So, but first you have to feel it. Um, I would also say, I would definitely um, say that six's own power and authority often gets projected out onto others. Um, but also, and again, here I'm going to talk in terms of subtypes. I think for the self-preservation six, what's in the shadow is confidence hmm. and aggression uh, you know, being really angry and wanting to lash out at people. Instead, they kind of put that in the shadow and take a friendly approach. Um, don't hurt me. Don't attack me because I'm so nice. Um, but really, that's driven by fear. And so confidence in themselves um, gets, you know, uh, seen as something that's just not true about themselves. Um, I also think faith can be um, uh, in the shadow for sixes. It's like part of the why they get so, they get going so much on all the things they need to do to control and, and stay safe is because they don't have a sense of faith that things will work out if they just allow things to go and take their natural course. Um, I also think for sexual six, what's um, in their shadow is vulnerability. So self-preservation sixes 
feel too in touch with vulnerability and not enough in touch with their own strength and confidence uh, and courage. Uh, whereas sexual uh, sixes, they look uh, scary. They look like they're fearless, uh, but really there's a lot of fear and vulnerability down inside that I've worked with sexual sixes sometimes where it's really hard for them to access vulnerability and talk from that place. Um, it, it's just like they skip over that. It's hard. It's intolerable because they really sort of focus so much on this more conscious strategy of being scary and needing to be uh, tough, at least on the outside. Um, and I also think a shadow for sixes, and this may refer to all sixes, is what's going well. You know, a little bit like with fours, you tend to focus on what's missing uh, and not focus on what's good in the here and now. Sometimes sixes don't focus on opportunities, on all that's going well, and that there is that things are safe and secure. It's like sixes can't turn it off, that sense of always needing to uh, scan the horizon. You know, well, that makes it so you can never relax. So having a, a sense of being able to just relax and have faith and go with the flow, um, sometimes that can be uh, shadowy. I want to add two things for sixes as shadows. <clears throat> uh, loyalty is many times positioned as something noble. Mm. But many times loyalty for sixes is um, cowardice. And, you know, uh, you, uh, I will feel protected because I'm loyal to you. Don't mm. do anything to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there is also lack of loyalty mm. all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the, the shadowy aspect for sixes of starting the riot or the mutiny. Ah, interesting. It's like they are the ones that start the revolt against that mm -hmm. other person. I'd call that a pirate shadow, you know, in the pirate ship starting mm -hmm. the mutiny against the captain. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Kind of a revolutionary, um, but projected out more onto, I have to meet the threat out there. And, and that makes sense. Uh, so disloyalty also. Disloyalty. Yeah. So sevens. Um, okay. I can start. So sh uh, sevens in general, they have the shadow of not keeping on with commitment. Mm. Um, sometimes we try to make it less bad than it actually is. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's like, I don't keep my word. Mm -hmm. And I have promised something that now mm -hmm. I don't even remember I did. Mm -hmm. And you're wrong. Mm -hmm. and what, a, you know, what, what about it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then there is a shadow of, I don't really see you. Mm -hmm. I don't see you. And I don't mm -hmm. care much, you know? I'm much more about myself. Mm -hmm. And even for social sevens, I think we should not idealize as if they they are being being careful with others because they really care. Mm -hmm. It's even selfish in that, mm -hmm. in 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 that I can't see pain in my field of vision. Mm -hmm. Not that I am altruistic, mm -hmm. and I I think that self referencing uh, hides perhaps the biggest narcissistic um, tendency mm -hmm. of all mm -hmm. the Enneagram, maybe just force can come close. Mm -hmm. um, or, and, and I prioritize my own pleasure, not yours. Um, and so sometimes it's almost like you are responsible for not um, putting me down mm -hmm. in my upbeat, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and also, I, I trust my own plan uh, and not necessarily your plan mm -hmm. for what life should be. Mm -hmm. So I get a bit imposing of mm -hmm. my vision of life and I'll never allow you to control me. Mm -hmm. And then a shadow of uh, mm -hmm. freedom, independency, mm -hmm. uh, as a shadow of not really committing or being available mm -hmm. for whatever comes my way mm -hmm. right right yeah so i would say i would add to that um i mean first of all this is sort of most people know this but 
a lot of sevens have a really hard time seeing how their focus on what's positive and pleasurable is also an avoidance of pain. So the fear of pain often is a shadow for sevens. Um, um, we talk about that a lot, but um, a fear, a sense that if I allow myself to feel suffering or pain, I won't survive it. Uh, almost like a, a, a belief in their own lack of resilience in the face of pain um, and as if they can't handle it. And that's part of what drives the sort of even the anxiety that sometimes drives the need to focus on what's positive um, is this real big fear of pain and suffering that they really often have avoid being aware of. I would say another thing that can be a shadow is um, how the, the net, when it's sometimes necessary to see the negative in the situation, um, to see what's not working. Um, a, a lot of times some sevens, especially sexual sevens, can work really hard to deny uh, some pieces of reality that are really happening. Um, and this becomes particularly bad when it's like, for instance, they don't want to see um, abuse in their family. You know, so we often s note that sevens often say they had a really happy childhood. Um, and later when they do some inner work, they realize, wow, actually my parent was an alcoholic or my parent tried to commit suicide. Or yeah. there's all these really blatant signs that things were not okay in their childhood that they really deny. So the actual bad conditions um, of their life can be denied in ways that have really negative consequences for other people. Um, like if you're not seeing how your partner is abusive to you and your kids, your kids can suffer, you know, and I've heard sevens tell these stories of how they didn't see how their children were suffering as a result of somebody's actions that they didn't want to see. Um, so I think, um, and, and again, that goes along with the fear of painful emotions or painful situations. Like I just won't see it, um, which, and, and then all the consequences of that. Um, I also think they don't, uh, they often don't see the value of suffering, you know, that, that feeling pain is sometimes a positive thing. Like for instance, if, if you lose someone, if someone dies and you feel grief, that's a reflection of how much you love that person. And grieving is a normal process of feeling the loss and working through it and eventually letting it go. Um, we often say you need to let in suffering so it can go away. But it's like the value of pain is also something that sevens often have a really hard time seeing and, and understanding. Um, and I would also say um, some of the negative consequences of the need for freedom, um, some of the ways they can be really anti-authoritarian. Um, we often say in, in businesses and organizations, five, sevens don't like hierarchy. Right. So I don't want to be told what to do and I don't want to tell anyone else what to do. Well, sometimes hierarchy can be a good thing, you know, and not seeing how um, sometimes it's good to get direction from others. And so there's this very extreme kind of anti-authoritarianism. And I think because it's not as obvious as sixes anti-authoritarian streak, it gets sort of um, clouded more in charm and friendliness and positivity so that people don't see how much they're, um, they're trying to resist being controlled in any way by anything, you know, so it's this kind of radical anti-authoritarianism, which I think um, I've seen, and I'm thinking of a couple people I know, a couple sevens that even get into like this desire, like a favoring anarchy over structure. You know, like it would be better if everyone could just do what they want. It's kind of like a radical libertarianism where they don't acknowledge the negatives of that and how that's actually can be harmful if you don't have um, any kind of order or structure. Um, they can be so allergic to control and having their freedom limited that they don't see the positives of having some sort of authority that that does create order for for, for people in positive ways. Another seven shadow is how they can be harsh on themselves without yeah. anybody knowing. Right, 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 right. And I think just some of the 
um, the negative consequences of being narcissistic. You know, I don't like to use that word very much because these days it has such a negative connotation. But we're not talking about the pathology here, just a behavioral trait, perhaps there is more simple. Right. And I think, but I, I do think that as a shadow, narcissism is important to point yes. to is that there is a way that it's all about me. Uh, and like you said, not seeing the other. So that was rich. Maybe we should move on to our top five today. That sounds like a good idea. It's time for it, for that. Can you say that beautiful phrase you always <laughs> say? I miss it if you don't. It's say time it. for our top five. And what is our top five today, B? Our top five today is the top five most innovative. Mm. Top five most innovative types. Yeah. And again, it's always a tendency. Right. There are other factors that might weigh in, uh, like if the person has studied something or, you know, studied even innovation. Yeah. Uh, but what is your number five? Um, I would say my number five is five. I think mm. fives are, are fairly innovative. I think probably maybe self-preservation fives a little bit less so. Um, but I think fives tend to be um, innovative, especially in an intellectual creativity way. Like I think fives can imagine a lot of different scenarios. They often uh, gain a lot of expertise about something, but also want to use that expertise to um, create new things. Um, so I, five, you know, not maybe the most innovative, but innovative. So I have them as number five. My number five is type eight. I think that AIDS at times can think of new solutions because um, they, they want to exceed. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that they are not as much attached to rules or mm -hmm. the status quo. Mm -hmm. And they do have a little bit of a tendency to innovate. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there is that thing for uh, body types. That is, there is one way to do stuff mm -hmm. and they may fall into routine. So they are my fifth. Mm -hmm. Actually, type eight is my fourth. It's in my number four position for similar reasons. I think sometimes when eights uh, see, they're good at seeing the big picture. They're good at meeting challenges. And I think they can be innovative in that they really can have a broad vision of what's the best way to meet this challenge. And I think they can be creative and open uh, to seeing a way forward in ways that might be um and may, might create new new ways of seeing. So I, I would say eight is my number two. And my fourth is five. Oh. So fives, I think, are pretty innovative uh, because they keep thinking, 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 mm -hmm. and they're not attached to one way. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that head types have, innovate, innovation-wise, they have the advantage of seeing multiple options and, you know, having scenarios and mm -hmm. you know sometimes complex thinking and thinking out of the box but uh, i do think that happens with fives mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. uh, but at times depending on the instinctual sequence i think that fives don't dare mm -hmm. uh, to go with the innovation in practice mm -hmm. and by the way that's a difference between creativity and innovation mm -hmm. so i think that fives might be a bit more creative than innovative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is your third um my third is three oh. um i think threes are innovative again partly because of that phrase necessity is the mother of invention um i think uh when threes uh, are trying to meet a goal, they can be very good at finding, okay, what is the path to the goal? And they can uh, sort of really be creative in getting to the goal, partly because they're so motivated by goals. And they're, so, they're very motivated to find the best way to the goal. And again, I think sometimes motivated by wanting to look good or succeed. But I think that often motivates them to think creatively and, 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 and find innovative ways of doing things. But again, not number one, but mm -hmm. you know, number three, what about you? 
My number three is the nine self press repressed types. <laughs> I think that Ego innovation... Ego breaking the rules. Yeah, yeah. that was innovating. Oh, innovator. yeah, you're just validating your position for five. As a self press, not as a five. Self press oh. repressed. Well, both, because uh, five is number four for you. Yeah, but I think, <laughs> I think, for instance, I think I am pretty innovative mm -hmm. and... Um, and I think it comes more from my self press repressed. Mm. Like self press repressed people are more like the entrepreneurs. Mm. And uh, while the self press dominants are more like the CEOs, the managers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that self press repression brings a quality of risking. Mm. And innovation does require more uh, uh, ability to risk. Um, mm -hmm. or being prone to risk, mm -hmm. not a, 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 a avoidant of risk. Mm -hmm. And I think self-press, repressed people also don't like routines as much. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they, it's natural that they try to do things in different ways all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your innovative mindset also comes from being a social vibe in addition to mm. the self pres repressed. It's a mix. It's a mix because I think you're always thinking of sort of new ways, new frontiers, you know, new ways to add to the knowledge that's out there uh, and, and ways that often there are ways that people haven't thought of and yeah. being intellectually creative in a way. Okay. Okay, so second my second is, my number two position is type four. Mm -hmm. I think fours are very innovative. I think sometimes it's uh, a kind of uh, desire to express their special vision. Um, it's an idealism. Um, it's an ability to envision, um, sometimes aesthetically, but sometimes just in terms of the, the art of creation. Um, how things can be different or better or um, improved according to a kind of um, broad idealistic vision or a self-expressive impulse um, to express their own creativity or their own take on things and to be known through the new ideas that they have and the creative ways they express them. My second is seven. I think sevens are uh, innovative almost as a default, mm -hmm. although I think they are a bit more creative than innovative. Uh, and I think. And how would you, how would you well, define the difference? I, I won't go into the huge. But maybe just something short, because I'm sure people about, are wondering that as yeah. they hear you say that. I think that being creative is not necessarily committed to finally doing things differently. Uh, so being innovative is a little bit more like creating a plan for something new. Not only a plan, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, implementing things that are really new mm -hmm. and going for them and mm -hmm. so forth. But, but it's a very complex field of study. Mm -hmm. And people who work with innovation are really strong in saying it's nothing to do with being creative. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I won't go there. I think that sevens uh, tend to be more innovative uh, when they think about multiple options, when they think out of the box, when they mm. don't like routines, when they uh, try to go for different things, when they don't like something, they start doing that differently. Mm -hmm. And and it's so, uh, so interesting to see how they come up with a new idea like this, like mm -hmm. in a spark of the second. Yeah. And as we're talking about what is being innovative mean, I think it does, it is, I think of it as out of the box thinking mm -hmm. of thinking of new things. It's like a little bit more like novelty as opposed to just say a, a creativity, new ideas or a individual uh, vision. Um, it's more about like thinking of something that hasn't been done before and, and wanting to, to, to do it differently or, or in a new way. And your first is seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For everything you said, um, I do think they're the first, in part because I think they, it's almost like, like you said, they're, they're innovative by default. It's part of their default mode, part of a deeply habitual way of being and thinking of always looking for what's new, always imagining 
positive future possibilities and how things could be different. And I think there may also be, we just, we, uh, in terms of maybe a shadow side for seven, part of that innovation can be a fear of boredom with what's usual or the normal way of doing things um, and feeling limited by that. So I think that's, that there is something in the seven personality that is, of course, being innovative is very positive, but I think there's also a, a very egocentric kind of way of being that's very central to the seven personality, to the lower level of awareness of uh, that is just the definition of personality. Um, and so, although I think also the high side of sevens can also contain an innovative uh, mindset or way of being, I think it, it spans the, the levels a, a bit. There can be sort of a, a lower level need to be innovative as a way of escape of the what's normal. And even, I mean, I think sometimes when sevens fear avoid boredom, it's really a fear of anxiety or of being open to whatever comes truly in the moment instead of planning and, 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 and controlling your own experience. My first is four. And I think uh, it's, it's simply impossible for fours not to bring in a personal touch, do something that nobody else does, mm -hmm. think uh, of something completely different to work with, mm -hmm. find innovative new ways to do things that people have always done another way. And, and also in distinguishing themselves and distinguishing mm -hmm. whatever they do mm -hmm. and not, not being okay with people bringing them more of the same, mm -hmm. like as leaders, yeah. they need to break frontiers and, and, you know, to be the ones creating tendencies mm -hmm. or being the pioneers. Uh, like if it wasn't for a big drive for innovation, Steve Jobs would never have created the iPhone. Right. And I, I see, knew you would bring him up. <laughs> yeah. But also other people come to my mind. Mm -hmm. I think, for instance, that people, uh, you know, there is a br famous Brazilian architect mm -hmm. worldwide also uh, called Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. And he was a four and uh, he said things like, I don't care if my client has uh, 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 something they want if it's not good taste i'll go with my taste mm -hmm. you know it's mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. it's like being innovative and everything you did was different from before mm -hmm. and um and i think that four simply don't stop thinking of something new they mm -hmm. are always changing mm -hmm. like a permanent m metamorphosis mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. Yeah. Similar. Our yeah. ranks were similar. Definitely. Yeah. Not that different. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. And we hope you'll join us again next time for our Enneagram 2.0 podcast, where we talk about all things Enneagram.